Welcome to Money Making Conversation. I'm your host, Rashawn McDonald. It's time to stop reading other people's success stories and start writing your own. Now, you can be motivated by their success because their stories can offer direction and help you reach your goals through your planning and committed effort. My interviews provide the consumer and business owner access to celebrities, CEOs, entrepreneurs, and industry decision makers. My next guest is Sister Soldier. She is a New York Times bestselling author. Her debate book, The Coldest Winter Ever, sold over a million copies and introduced the world to the quick-witted, bold, fashionable, erotic, soulful, and undeniable complicated character of Winter Santiago. The sequel to The Coldest Winter Ever, Life After Death, is out now. You can buy it right now. Previously, as you know the background on Sister Soldier, recording artist with the hip-hop group Public Enemy, she is best known as a political activist, educator of urban youth from underserved communities, a graduate of Rutgers University. Her first book, Sold, like I said earlier, over a million copies. It was recognized in Essence, Emerge Magazine, as when it was a bestseller. In 2018, it was included in PBS Great American Read program, and currently it has over a million copies in print. Please welcome to Money Making Conversation to discuss her new book, Coldest Winter Ever, Life After Death, Sister Soldier. Peace. Thank you for welcoming me. I'm glad to be here. Well, uh, I, I'm happy. You know, this is uh, we're coming into a new year with a fantastic book. Uh, 2020 was a was a upheaval year for a lot of people. How did it affect you? And uh, did you write the book in 2020, or you started it prior to that? In 2020, I wrote this book. the book in 2020. Okay, definitely in mm -hmm. that year. And uh, 2020 was a very difficult year. I think all around the world. Mm -hmm. I don't think that anybody will forget 2020 mm -hmm. uh, on, every, on every level. Personally, won't forget it. Politically, will never forget it. <laughs> Financially, won't forget right. it. <laughs> you know, culturally, won't forget it. So it, it was a very uh, difficult year for everybody. With that being said, when you work in a show, a book is complicated at this, because there are a lot of complex characters, but a lot of familiar characters. And a lot of people have been waiting on this book, the sequel to this book, because Winter's character, you know, in the, in the previous book, they wanted to know what happened to the character. Tell us about that journey of writing the book. You say you wrote it during 2020, but I thought that was a thought process prior to 2020, laying the chapters, laying the storylines. Talk about that. Walk us through those steps. Okay. Well, actually, uh, when the Coldest one ever first published in 1999, right. which I really think is 1998, but in 1999 is, is the number that everybody wants to go with, so that's fine. When it first published, I wanted to write a sequel you know, immediately. I began thinking about a sequel immediately, but then I thought about the fact that the coldest winter ever is a cautionary tale. Right. It was something not to glorify the drug lifestyle, but to expose it and show how it how drugs destroys the whole family ultimately. So because the coldest winter ever ended with uh, Winter Santiago being convicted and sentenced to a mandatory minimum of 15 years, I wanted that to resonate in our community for people to really feel, you know, the absence of her presence or the absence of the presence of someone that you really love or you really miss. Because that's what happens in the real world when our loved ones get incarcerated and it's serious. So for everybody that was out there calling it the drug game, you know, glorifying it and glamorizing it, I wanted to make it clear that it's not a game. It's a death style, not a lifestyle. And that the whole family can get destroyed once you get involved in it. Well, that's important because we do have a family here. You know, you have a... So, like I said, I have I didn't read the first book. I read the second book, outstanding uh, read from cover to cover. I generally I'm gonna tell you how I read books. I, I get up in the morning with an interview on a, a writer about the book. I read it the day of, and uh, I, I got up at two o'clock in the morning and I read it, and it was like uh, it, was, it was it was very colorful. It was very uh, the characters. I always like to say uh, were, 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 were were relatable. I thought. 
And I thought because of the fact that, you know, they were emotionally driven, they were passionate, they were tied to a belief, and they were honest people. And I think what, what shines the most in your late in your book, and it's in all your previous writing, this book is called Life After Death, the honesty of the characters. Talk walk us through the steps and the honesty of the characters and are you reaching for certain people that you know, or are these just your imagination? These characters are definitely characters from my imagination. And I think the key to writing these kinds of characters for any author or aspiring author is that you have to be able to uh, t completely distance mm -hmm. yourself from the characters that you create. You can't look at it as you want to control the character or you want to control the character's voice, the character's desires, whatever the case. So, for example, Winter Santiago is very different from Sister Soldier. Uh, how Winter would answer a question is completely different from how I, the author, would answer the question. So I can't start trying to slip my personality into her personality without corrupting the character. If I want the character to be genuine, I have to have let the character have a life of its own, if you will. So for each and every character in the, in the books that I write, I don't let Sister Soldier interfere in the character, no matter what. Well, that's, that's important to hear. But let me the, the, when they, when they sent over the information, I'm reading about the the background. It was saying although soldier, is, 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 you know, this is a nonfiction and winter winter San Diego is fiction. Both said she and I are real. That's what just stated in the bio. And in fact, fictitious winter is realer than you. Talk about that when you say that. When you say even though you said these are made up characters, the statement is that she's realer. When you say realer, what do you mean when you say that? What I mean is that she uh, uh, is she's a representation right. of probably, you know, a million other young ladies in the hood and in the suburbs and the rural areas across the whole United States of America. And and it becomes obvious that she's a representation because of how great the love for her is. Uh, because of how high the sales of her story is, mm -hmm. all of that is uh, is obvious. When I first wrote the book, the amount of hundreds and then thousands of letters I got about Winter Santiago made it clear to me that she is real and real as personified uh, in in the lives of real. Uh, people in our neighborhoods who feel she's real because she represents their sentiments or their emotions or their challenges or their lifestyle or, you know, or, or their fantasies, right. fantasies of, of who they would like to be. You no know, interesting thing when I, because when I, you're a performing artist and, yes. uh, and I, I was blessed that in my life, you know, a stand up comedian. And I uh, got to experience heights of Def Comedy Jam performing at Madison Square Garden. And that live that live performance is really filled with adrenaline. You know, mm. from a standpoint as a writer, and I'm a sitcom writer, I've written dramas, I've written reality shows and things like that. So that's a different level and uh, from when I was a performing artist as a stand-up comedian. And and because it wasn't as raw, and as a and as a performing artist, and you're out there rapping, that's a raw form of entertainment. When you're out there writing, what compels you and drives your passion as a writer, Sister Soldier? Uh, I think that uh, myself as a writer is is the top. Right. Is the top. In other words, uh, as a music performing artist or anything else, really. Uh, a writer clearly tops all of that uh, because I have a very vast imagination. I have thousands of stories in my head. I love the whole process of researching, uh, reading, studying, uh, traveling the world, learning new cultures, new languages, experiencing new things, and being able to draw from all of those things at once. And it's a real challenge. And when you're creating a character, it gives you uh, a greater respect for 
for God than you may have ever had because you say, wow, it takes all of this energy and all of this imagination and all of this effort and all of this passion and all of this soul to create this one inanimate character. Right. And here the the higher power, the maker of all souls has created each and every one of us and each and every one of us has something unique about us and each of us has a backstory. It just makes you say, well, alhamdulillah, how great God is. You know, it's really, it was really great talking to you. I want to thank you for taking the time to discuss your book that's out now, Life After Death, the sequel to the coldest winter, winter ever, and winter being the, char- the lead character in your uh, in your novel series. Uh, you know, you said something earlier. We was talking about drugs, and you was talking about that lifestyle, and you were, your goal was not to glorify it. That's why right. she went to jail 15 years and, and served every year of that in prison. And that's very important in your storytelling dynamics. And so when I when I look at the reality of what life is, your education, you know, your degree, graduate of Rucker University, tell us how important that is and how is important is that part of your legacy when you're talking to young people about your career and you're talking about your career as a writer now? Well, I think the university level is important, uh, not for the same reasons that maybe other people think is important. I think it's important because like for somebody like me who came from the Bronx right. and then uh, came from the poor suburbs, you know, after the Bronx, uh, going to a university and seeing the facility itself is a very amazing experience. Going out on the yard and seeing all of the organizations that the university offers and realizing that anything you ever imagined in your life, you can learn and master in a university is a very uh, wonderful feeling. So if you're standing there, you just arrived, it's your first week on campus, you can join an organization to row a boat. If that's your right. thing, that's you want to row a boat, you want to play the piano, you want to be in the science club, you want to do experiments, you want to uh, jump out of airplanes, you want to shoot rifles, whatever you want to do. And on a university level, uh, in a major university, it's an opportunity that's there and all of the resources are there. I spent my whole young life wishing that I owned a piano. Right. And when I got to the university and I went to the music, uh, the campus for music, I went into a building and every single room had a piano. Wow. And because I was a student and I had a student ID, I could access that piano. I could master that piano if I studied it. So I just think universities are amazing and that young people should strive to get to the university level, not for the sake of prestige or arrogance or even for just social activity but because the sky is the limit with expanding your mind mastering some skills and talents and being able to own and control your own business and that's important and i i wanted to make sure i talked about your 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 college education because you know, it, it changed my life. You know, my degree is in mathematics and my minor is sociology. And, and I, like you, I went to college and it changed me. And it, and it changed me in so many ways because it showed me there's so many avenues of what I could be. And Absolutely. when you promote the value of that, it's, it's, it's incredible. But I, I know we have a few minutes left. And the amazing thing about a novel is that you don't really want to tell the story because you want people to read the story. Can you uh, can you tell us about some of the characters that have carried over into the sequel that you are building upon in the uh, sequel, Life After Death? Yes, in Life After Death, you will see, of course, Winter Santiago. She's the main, she's on the main stage in the spotlight. Mm-hmm. And then you'll see Midnight, of course, because whenever you see Winter, you have to see Midnight. Come on now, come on and now. And <laughs> you will see Winter's sister, Porsche Santiago. Mm-hmm. And she has a book of her own and she is quite dynamic, if I should say so myself. And uh, you'll see the man that Porsche ended up being married to um 
you will see Ricky Santiago. Oh, that's a big one because you know everybody loves him. Mm-hmm. And you'll see even Lana, glimpses of Lana Santiago. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, it's all of the characters that you met in the coldest winter ever. Mm-hmm. And for some of the characters, like Winter's Friends, in Life After Death, you'll see more right. insight into, with, into Winter's friendships and the characters, the same characters from The Coldest Winter Ever, but after 15 years of serving uh, a prison yeah. sentence. Like you say, you're going to look different, walk different, talk different, and it's because the life they live now is different. An incredible yeah. read. I'm just going to let you know I read it, uh, and, uh, and I will recommend it to my friends. I'm going to put it in my newsletter, put it on my social media. Uh, a great novel. You you know, you're, the blessing of this conversation I'm having with you, Sister Soldiers, that, uh, you know, you're a transcending person, you know. you Like you said, you come from the Bronx. You know, you're, you're, you're happily married. You have a child. You know, you're living a life of, uh, of that you want to live. And I feel as a writer, as a successful author, just tell me this. Uh, you know, we, we do these things creative. I was fortunate to be with Steve Harvey and we did uh, Act Like a Lady, Think Like a Man and nobody told us we would sell books and we sold three million copies. How did it feel to realize you had a bestseller on your hands? Well, I'm going to tell you, I like the reaction of the people in the neighborhoods Mm -hmm. that I grew up in. So I like like uh, if I walk down the street in Harlem, you know, I hear people whispering, oh, oh, this there she go. Mm-hmm. It's the girl. Mm-hmm. What girl? Even though I'm a grown, mature woman, right? <laughs> what girl? The girl that wrote the book. Right. What book? The book. Mm-hmm. The book. She wrote the book. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and so I love that kind of feeling because it's a neighborhood that's familiar to me. It's people mm-hmm. that's familiar to me. And it's even better than any award or any, you know, official kind of congratulations that you can get when you've seen your own people totally engaged in the words that you've written on the page. Well, it's fantastic words. And thank you for allowing me to speak to you and have an honest conversation about a brilliant writer, a brilliant artist, and an amazing talent. And keep transcending the world with your colorful style of writing and your and your activism. Thank you for coming on Money Making Conversations. Thank you for welcoming me, and thank you for putting me in your newsletter. <laughs> Absolutely, girlfriend. You the thing. You, as they say, you are the one. She the one. She the one. Right there. The book. The book. That's right. The name of that book is, you know, Life After Death by Sister Soldier. Again, I want to thank everybody who comes to Money Making Conversation. If you want to see more interviews or hear more interviews, please go to MoneyMakingConversation.com. I'm Rashawn McDonald. I am your host. 